Hey, whoa, oh, what you doing? Hey, friend of mine. This is a local band named uh, Hundred Acres. Hundred Acres. We got Randy, Randy Bros singing. Jesus, someone to hear your prayer, someone to care. Your own. These are local bands. Jesus, they're called the Hundred Acres. I um, I recommend checking these guys out. They've got two CDs, and this is from their second CD. This is a remake of Johnny Cash and uh, Depeche Mode's Personal Jesus. Anyway. Thanks for tuning into the Boris Show. We had a special visitor last time, but uh, he was a little camera shy. I get him to come in today. How you doing, Shrek? Hey, he's doing good, doing good. How do you forget everything, bro? Donkey, donkey, come here. Well, he can throw his voice like his mouth's not moving. Crazy, crazy. What's that? Oh man, what is this here? Oh, JS got you that while he was in Japan, didn't he? Ah, ah, I see. Okay. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in there. Yeah, donkey, donkey. Anyway, um, someone asked me uh, if I uh, had read the book uh, Haggard Harry and the Bountiful Harvest by uh, J.S. Moore. That's one book I've not read yet, but uh, I, I see I, the request came in to see if J.S. would read from this book. So I'm going to let J.S. come in on this in uh, just one second, okay? One second. Hey guys, yeah, somebody asked me about working for Ed Moore, and uh, there's actually a chapter in this book that's all about Ed, and this book's actually dedicated to Ed Moore. I worked for Ed Moore at the Eastman Road Food City for a bunch of years, and uh, actually graduated high school with Ed's son Scott, Scott Moore, and my name is Jason Scott Moore, but uh, people thought I was Ed's son, and to work for him, I really felt like I was part of the family. But this, this uh, story is called The Conductor, and uh, I'm just going to read it to you now. I could just tell it to you from memory, but I'll just, I'm going to read it. Ed Moore had a gift. Uh, anyone he crossed path with, uh, even if the interaction was brief, somehow he managed to impact their lives in a positive way. I can look back now, and I can see very clearly how he was able to influence and develop me into a much better person. Ed Moore inspired me, but maybe more important than this, he encouraged me. Perhaps the greatest thing he did for me, if I had to choose, was letting me work at his store. And I don't mean bagging groceries. I'm talking about real, honest work. I understand that in to early 2008, I had a life-changing event happen, and I had to change employers. Ed's office was upstairs at the Eastman Road location where I worked, but I was working for someone else upstairs. Bagging groceries afforded me the opportunity to interact with people from all walks of life. I was sharing the good news with just about everyone I came into contact with. Well, finally someone got mad and they went inside the store to complain. This was at the end of my shift, so when I went to clock out, one of the assistant managers met me at the time clock, and they were steaming mad. Jason, he fumed, you can't be telling people that what God has done for them, and he loves them. Nobody wants to hear that. I see. I told him. Well, I'm going to pray for you, and I'll see you tomorrow morning. The following morning, that very same assistant manager met me at the time clock. Jason, he said, and I thought I was going to get fired. I owe you an apology, Jason. Um, I spoke with Ed upstairs, and whatever it is you're doing, Jason, you keep right on doing it. You know, impact is everything. Um, I don't know if Food City lets their employees now tell people that kind of good news, but that kind of good news is good news that people need to hear. The man who came in to complain, he had lost his wife recently, but he returned to Food City within the month to tell me, thank you. You said exactly what I needed to hear. I just didn't know it at the time. Our community lost a bright and shining star this week when Ed Moore passed away. But it just goes to show that the world, that there, in the world there are good people, persons of principle, folks of the highest value. Ed Moore was a treasure that cannot be replaced in Kingsport. At any rate, this is actually a conversation that I'm having with Harry Bowyer. I'm telling Harry about Ed, and uh, he wasn't sure if he knew Ed, but then he said, is Ed a, a grocer? And I said, yeah. So Harry sat there on the bench, 
And I told him this story about, about Ed letting me work in his store. You're not afraid to plant your feet when it comes to your faith. For this very reason, it's important to continue getting the real message across. Jesus' arms are outstretched. This is not an exclusionary tale. I believe that, Jason. Did Ed have family? His mother's in her 90s, and his son Scott and I graduated high school together, Harry. The people he worked with at Food City, from the bottom rung to the top of the ladder, were his family as well. Then they can help carry his healing cup too, Harry says. No one close to Ed would dishonor him by not drinking from it. Harry raises his styrofoam cup and he makes a toast. To Ed Moore and a bountiful harvest. Agreed, Harry. Let's keep filling that cup and passing it around to our neighbors. It's flowing over. There is no half full or half empty. Cheers. And suggested listening in this case was uh, by Ernie Ford and it's Children Go Where I Send Thee. Now this is the book. It's called Haggard Harry and the Bountiful Harvest. Um, and it comes from the book of Luke, uh, chapter 10, verse 2. The harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he would send forth laborers into his harvest. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. I'd normally turn it over to Boris to tell you, see you later. But at any rate, it's good to see you. God bless you.